Sinnoh Remix confirmed! With the announcement of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl as well as Pokemon Legends Arceus, Gen 4 Pokemon are now going to be main topics of the conversation in the fandom. So, here I am. Let's take advantage of this renewed interest in these Pokemon by talking about one of the weirdest and least talked about Pokemon to come out of this generation, Porygon Z. This is two, but Porygon Z. Who really created it? And for what purpose? <laughs> so, unlike Porygon Z, these headphones, which are sponsoring this segment and are super nice, tend to be glitch-free instead of wigging out constantly. The Soundcore Life Q35 noise-canceling headphones are quite the bang for the buck. We're talking CD-like quality music, LDAC coding technology from Sony, which enables high-resolution audio to transmit even over a Bluetooth connection, giving this better performance for a third of the price of competitors. And the noise-canceling. There's multiple noise cancelling modes. Transport, indoor, outdoor. There's a mode for each to maximize the active noise cancelling to adapt to where you are. Is someone rudely tapping on your shoulder demanding your attention? Well, don't worry about scrambling to your phone to open Spotify and go to your podcast and pause it because these headphones have wearing detection. You take them off and BAM! The music pauses on its own. They are light, comfy, and easy to wear, but their battery life is anything but short. 40 to 60 hours of active playing time, depending on if you have noise cancelling on or not? Think of how many days you could forget to charge them and still be able to use them on your daily walks that you should definitely do. Health tips from Loxton. Oh boy, people love those. <laughs> There's not enough of them on this channel. <laughs> Check them out with the link below and order yours today. It really helped me out. Link below. Let's start things off by going over the basics of the Porygon line. Porygon is a normal type Pokemon introduced in Gen 1 as an artificial Pokemon. According to a report found in the Silphco building, it was created at the Cinnabar Pokemon Lab, and according to the Pokédex, they have the curious ability to travel through cyberspace. Tron style. That's awesome and sci-fi enough on its own, but the Pokedex also mentions that the intended purpose of its creation was to explore space. Space. As in space, space, space. 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 But so far has never been able to manage it, probably due to its low poly nature. Back in the 90s when Porygon was made, 3D computer graphics were rudimentary. Uh, this probably took a room full of servers to create, but like with real 3D models, as the technology advances, the number of polygons a simple computer chip can think up. That expands exponentially even, so it wasn't too long after that we get Porygon 2. Introduced in Gold and Silver, this form is obtained through trading Porygon with the upgrade item equipped, just as one would upgrade their graphics card to run better looking games with amazing things such as curves. Porygon 2's Pokedex entries also mention its purpose was for planetary development, so space travel. But it still couldn't manage it very well, because it still couldn't fly very well. You'd think fixing that would have been their top priority, but I guess not. Instead, they wanted... Curves. <laughs> then finally, we have Porygon Z, introduced in Diamond and Pearl as the evolved form of Porygon 2. This form is obtained by trading Porygon 2 with the dubious disc item. Hmm. Porygon Z's dex entries state that its purpose is to be able to work in alien dimensions. Huh. They can't even figure out basic space travel, but they keep just raising the stakes. I mean, how did we end up going from let's explore space to failure? and then move to, okay, let's explore other dimensions. That sounds like a huge leap in logic. Now, it's important to note that when Diamond and Pearl were released, alien dimensions weren't really a thing yet. There was no ultra space. Gen 4 came out before Gen 7, wow. In fact, it wouldn't even be until the end of the main story of Pokemon Platinum, the Gen 4 third game, that the existence of other dimensions, specifically the Distortion World, would be known. So why the change? It seems very specific, especially when taking Pokemon Platinum's plot into consideration. Who would benefit from this? Well, I may have the answer, and it's not specifically a single person, 
but a group of people, a team of people. Team Galactic. Team Galactic was the evil team of the Sinnoh games. They were led by Commander Cyrus, who wanted to destroy the universe and rebuild it in his own image, without emotion or spirit. While he ultimately doesn't succeed in any of the versions you play, his fate does differ depending on the version played. After defeating him for the final time at Spear Pillar and Diamond and Pearl, he just goes away, swearing revenge and is then never seen or heard from again. In Platinum, however, this scene plays out differently. Time to launch someone into another dimension! Cyrus instead finds himself in the Distortion World, and you follow. Now you must defeat him while in the Distortion World, and of course you do. But after this, Cyrus chooses to stay in the Distortion World and learn its secrets, vowing to the player that they will one day wake up in the world he will create. So now, take into consideration the perspective of the other members of Team Galactic. Keep in mind that Cyrus choosing to stay here is known only to the player and Cynthia, the champion of the Sinnoh region. The rest of Team Galactic has absolutely no clue what happened to Cyrus. He just got grabbed into this other world and like that's the last they ever saw of him. So from their perspective, he's trapped in the distortion world, an alien dimension. And being loyal to him, it makes sense for some of them to look for a way to rescue him. The question for them would be how to go about it. Well, they could... Summon the eternal dragon and wish Cyrus back to their dimension. But that seems risky and impossible since you likely captured the eternal dragon. So how about using a Pokemon designed to inhabit alien environments? Now we're using the term alien in this context to mean unfamiliar and disturbing, not the usual sci-fi use of the term. And have you seen the distortion world? I'd say alien is an apt description. Hunks of land just floating precariously, appearing and disappearing at random, sometimes stationary, sometimes mobile, G gravity shifting in different areas, waterfalls flowing upside down. That's is like being on the inside of an MC Escher painting. How is this not disturbing and alien? But I digress. Porygon Z fits the bill perfectly here, almost too perfectly though. And up until this point, Porygon had nothing to do with Team Galactic. So why would they suddenly have it? And how did they come to create a new evolution for it? To answer that, we have to answer the question, who created Porygon in the first place? It's not outright stated, but it is heavily implied that the one responsible for Porygon's creation is Silphco the leading manufacturer of Pokemon-related technology, like TMs, HMs, the Sylphscope, and various Pokeballs. There's a document you find in the Sylphco office building during the Kanto games stating that Porygon was created at the Pokemon Lab on Cinnabar Island. And why would Sylphco have that documented and stored within their company? Well, most likely because they own the Pokemon Lab, or at the very least, commissioned Porygon's creation from it. And this theory is more solidified thanks to Porygon's evolution item, the Upgrade, as in the Gen 2 games and their remakes, it can only be found in the Sylphco building. And in order to upgrade Porygon, they'd have to be the ones that owned Porygon's data in the first place. They'd need an understanding of its source code, after all. So, we know who created Porygon and Porygon 2, but how do we link that to Team Galactic? Well, through Team Rocket, or rather, a former member of Team Rocket. Meet Scientist Ross, a member of Team Rocket you encounter in Johto during the player's raid of their Mahogany Town hideout. Before and after you battle him, he tells you that he's a former Sylphco employee, and that he is the one who invented and implemented what we'll call the Forced Evolutionary Signal. That's the signal that was being broadcasted in the Lake of Rage that caused the local Magikarp to evolve into Gyarados, and also possibly directly responsible for the appearance of Red Gyarados specifically. What does this tell us? Well, that he used to work for Sylphco, which could imply that the whole raid on Sylphco during the Kanto games was an inside job orchestrated in part by him, and that he seems to specialize in Pokemon evolution through artificial means. Artificial means like, for example, 
electronic data stored on a CD for a certain artificial Pokémon to utilize. And also, once in the underworld of crime, especially in the context of mob bosses and Yakuza, you're always in that underworld of crime. What's a turncoat scientist to do when its organization, Team Rocket, is falling apart at the end of the Gem 2 games? Why, you simply join another crime organization. One that can better utilize your expertise, even. Johto and Sinnoh are theoretically pretty close to each other, as evidenced by the Sinjo ruins. So why not, as the scientist, rocket off to another galaxy? After all, this would explain why the dubious disc and the upgrade item in Platinum are found with Team Galactic. Now let's talk more about this dubious disc. Its in-game description is this. A transparent device overflowing with dubious data. Its producer is unknown. Dubious means hesitating or doubting, but it can also mean not to be trusted or suspicious, which is what it's called in Japanese, the suspicious patch. As in a software patch. I actually just got that. Am I dumb? But I mean, this is a completely reasonable label though, right? Like, if you don't know where your software or firmware updates are coming from, you'd certainly be suspicious about it. That data can't be trusted, and you'd certainly be doubtful and hesitant to use it. So, the possibility that the dubious disc was created by a most likely disgruntled former Silphco scientist turned Team Rocket scientist who is knowledgeable about Pokemon evolution certainly would make it dubious by design. Especially if this particular software upgrade were made in a rush to potentially save Cyrus from an alien dimension. Eh? Rushed software tends to have bugs. We learn this, like, every year with AAA games. And being filled with glitches and bugs, yeah, that'd be dubious. And it would explain the glitchy movements of Porygon Z. It's technically a theory, but I think it's a pretty solid one. So in conclusion, let's piece this all together. Porygon is created by Silphco at the Pokemon Lab on Cinnabar Island to explore space, but the technology at the time wasn't sufficient enough for them to realize that goal. During the three-year time skip from the Kanto games to the Johto games, Silphco develops and produces the upgrade item for Porygon, creating Porygon 2. This new form was supposed to improve Porygon's functionality in space, but it still couldn't fly there, so... That goal was still unfulfilled. After the events of the Johto games, scientist Ross somehow escapes after Team Rocket is disbanded for the second time, and possibly goes on to create the dubious disc with his knowledge of Pokémon evolution and his position as a former Silphco scientist. Team Galactic could have just obtained that information between the Johto and Sinnoh games, either through payment or other coercive means forcing the poor scientist to make it. Or maybe the scientists joined up with Team Galactic in the background. This would explain why both the upgrade and dubious disc items are in Team Galactic's possession in Pokémon Platinum. Now, there's no actual references to this happening about these items. Instead, they are just kind of... there. But with the connections we've made so far, I think it's relatively safe to make the assumption that they got these items from someone who knows what they're doing for the most part, and Ross's connections makes him the best fit for this scenario. Finally, some Team Galactic members would have used Porygon Z to attempt a rescue operation for their commander, but didn't go through with it either because of the player's intervention, taking these items from their facilities, or due to Charon, Karen, I forget how they pronounce it in the anime, uh, taking Team Galactic in a different direction during the post-game story of Platinum, which was really good. And there you have it, the mystery of one of the weirdest and most interesting Pokémon from Gen 4 explained. Although there is one question left unanswered, I guess, and that's what is causing the strange behavior being described in Porygon Z's Pokédex entries. Well, that is a theory for another day.